Welcome to today's video. This is my first video in quite a long time because I've been lazy, but this year I'm going to try to put out a video a week discussing various things we're learning, various approaches I'm taking to things. Today I'm going to talk about how to build a Shopify app. This app is currently pending approval, but the app itself is built, all the code is wrote. I'm going to take you through the code I uh, wrote to build it, take you through the pain points I found. Take you through the best bits of the documentation, take you through the worst bits of the documentation, things I've learned that I would, that I would do differently from here on out. This is a very technical um, tutorial, technical video. If you're just here to learn about Shopify, this is not the place to be. This is how you build a Shopify app with code. And that is it. So if you're interested in learning how to do this and how to get up and going with it, then continue watching this video. Let's jump on over to the code. Before we get into the code, I'm just going to show you the application quickly. This is the application here. It's in my apps store. Oh, sorry. It's in my uh, apps on my store. It's really basic. You can enable car flipping. You click enable. And then when any time an item is added to a cart, the cart will do a flip. The user has three options. Rotate fast, rotate slow, rotate both directions. So the purpose of this tutorial isn't to show you the app. It's to show you how I built it. Like what happens when I click disable. How is the app deployed? Where does it live? How do you send to the Shopify for review? All that good stuff is going to be covered. Now we can get to the code. So this is the code for the application. Now, uh, Shopify apps use Next.js. You can use other things as well, I think. But um, when you're building a Shopify app, you from now on, what you should use is the CLI tool, which essentially will scaffold the app out for you. So it gets everything set up quite quickly. Now there's a couple of little pain points with using that tool. I'm gonna I want to discuss things you should do when you use it. So let's get into the code. So like a lot of server side render applications, you're gonna have a pages directory. Now as you can see from my application, from what I showed you, it only has one page. So I just have index.js. Now in in index.js is where I set up my different components and stuff. You can break them out into separate files if you like having each file has a component. I wouldn't be bothered, and this is much easier to work with. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is the is the component library. Now with uh, Shopify apps, they actually give you a component library that I recommend you use. Why do you use it? Because your application have the same look and feel as other applications on the store. So uh, when people are downloading your app or installing it, they will feel more comfortable that it looks like other application. It looks like Shopify. So. I recommend using that Polaris. It's really good as well. It's loads of components out of the box. You don't have to worry about styling them up. So use that. The next thing I want to talk about is use React hooks. Uh, this isn't uh, if you go through some tutorials on YouTube by Shopify, they're using that class based components. Shouldn't use them. Uh, stick with React hooks. It's the new way how you do things. It's much cleaner. Use a use state, use a use effect. So if you are seeing tutorials are using classes and component and mount and constructor, uh, ignore it. Follow React hooks. The next thing is Apollo. When you install a Shopify application, it gives you an old version of Apollo. And if you follow along with the documentation, they're going to use this old version. And the syntax is not nice. It's cumbersome. And I was like, it surely has to be a better way. And it turned out Apollo taught the same. Because I went to the documentation, I found that the version of Apollo was much newer now. So next thing you do is use the CLI to scaffold the app, upgrade that version of Apollo. For me, it's on version, uh, there's Apollo Boost. It's on version 3.2.7. It could be newer now, whatever the newest one is, install it. And I'm just gonna quickly go through uh, the rest of the file here. So I'm using style components. Again, this doesn't come with the CLI tool. But installed if you like style components. I think they're okay. I kind of use them for this app, but um, yeah, I'm still not fully, fully set and having like a bunch of CSS at the top of my components and this prop syntax here. Yeah, I don't know is it for me, but um, that's a that's just a different story. So now you can see here, I'm using my uh, nice use state, set up all the shit I need. Uh, we're going to talk about how I'm creating snippets, what a snippet is, and. Which is quickly a snippet is what you create in the store so your JavaScript can live in the store because it needs to live somewhere. We're gonna go through that though when we go to the API side of things. We've update snippet, we've used effect, we've filed off, nothing fancy. Then we have this lovely template literal. 
probably could have done this in the server, but I wanted to do it here. It is what it is. Uh, this is essentially what's going to be inserted into that snip that we just talked about. So this is all you need to know for the front end. Follow those tips and tricks I gave you when you install, um, when you install your, or you set up your app. Make sure you're using hooks. Don't mind what you see other uh, channels using. Make sure you upgrade a version of Apollo. And then if you want to use, oh yeah, make sure you use a Polaris. And if you want to use um, style components, do your thing. I don't think I'm going to use them again, but that's me. Now we're going to move on to the back end side of things. Just as a heads up as well, uh, if you don't know what Apollo is, is how you do GraphQL calls. Shopify supports REST and GraphQL, but something we're going to discuss is that uh, some of the calls you do, Shopify will tell you that GraphQL can do all the requests you can with the REST API. You actually can't, and we're going to discuss that in the next part. But if you're just wondering what Apollo is and what this mad syntax is, that's GraphQL. Use that, and I want to just talk about the little drawbacks and things you would have to fix yourself because you can't do everything with it. But in uh, the, when you can use it, use it. Okay, so now we're going to get into the server side of things. This is where you create our snippet. The snippet is what you insert into the Shopify store, like what we said before, or into whatever store the user has. Now, you currently can't do this using GraphQL. You see here, I have a create script. That actually does not, and I just put it in for this tutorial. But you currently can't create snippets using GraphQL API, which isn't great, but I think Shopify will eventually add support him for that. So anyway, uh, with Next.js, all your server stuff lives in server. So we head over to server.js. The first thing we can talk about is the API key and the API secret. When you um, first create your app on, the, on your partner dashboard, you get an API secret and API key for the app. You just add them into your environment uh, variables. I'm not covering how to make the apps and stuff. I'm, I will link to the documentation because the documentation does a really good job uh, to make it really clear how to do it. I would just parrot on what they're saying. This be this video will be really long and be wasting my time and more important than wasting your time. So let's not discuss that. Next thing is webhooks. Webhooks are fired when an application is deleted, created. Oh, sorry, when a team is deleted, created. There's a bunch of them for like when a uh, product is added to the cart, for example. You need these in for GDPR, so I actually know now. <laughs> I just realized this app won't be accepted because I haven't added in all the web hooks. Even though my application doesn't use any user data, with GDPR, you need to have all that stuff in. GDPR is good sometimes as a pain in the ass. Other times, this is probably an example of it being a pain in the ass. Now, with all that uh, overhead covered, let's get into the meat of things, which is creating a snippet and removing a snippet. Now what I've done is I've created a services file called Shopify REST API service. Uh, actually, before we get into that, I'm using a known module to handle uh, authentication. It's this guy here, Shopify API node. Use this fella because you're gonna when you're making your app, you're gonna have to um, create snippets and stuff. It's just the way it works with Shopify apps. You can't use GraphQL to API to do that, so use this guy, and then. When you're creating your snippet, you can uh, do get all CTX, blah, 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 code is new Shopify. This is the module here. Auto shop, auto uh, access token API version. And that's all the authentication handles. So you can then focus on making snippets and stuff. So that's a big shout out to use that module. And again, I will link it in the description. Fantastic module for creating the snippets because you have to do it through the rest of the API. So let's get into it. So the main function here is create snippet and include. What does that do? I'm going to show you this on the, the code for the store, but let's go through the code here. First, you need to get the team ID. You want to get the active team ID. So you want to get the team that the user is currently using because that's where you're going to add in your code. Now, get active team ID is a function I wrote. So if you look at it, it is... I have only one hand here, that's why I can't do the command click. Um, I'm holding the microphone. So we have get active team ID, it takes in a Shopify like object. Uh, we get all the teams, the team, the t.role equals main, that's the team, and we return team ID. Okay. And then the next thing we need to do is get layout team code. That gets all the code for the layout of the team. The next thing you want to do then is include your snippet. This is like um, like including a file onto a page, this would be included onto the main page of the website. Like you include a script file on your own website. 
Next thing is just my little bit of magic on how to update the team. Because essentially, you have this big blob of a string being returned to you, and you need to insert code into it. So this is what I'm using. Free, free to copy it. Next, I do then, as you might, again, I use my Shopify object. I do asset.create, pass in the team ID. This is the directory I'm create, where I'm creating it. And then this is the name I'm giving it, which I pass in as an argument. Then the value, which is going to be the big blob of, um, or the big string with the updated code. So that creates my snippet. And then update my team.liquid is like the index file of a Shopify team where you include all your scripts. And I'm adding in the reference to that snippet. This sounds really confusing. I'm actually going to go through the code on the Shopify store and then you're going to see, oh, that's what he's doing. And then you're going like, oh, I shouldn't. Like, it's, it's easy. It's technically easy. <laughs> um, this for updating the snippet. It's like what I do above, but this time I obviously don't need to create the snippet or link to it. We just need to update it. That's like when a user says, oh, I want the double uh, card flip, not the single one. Remove snippet. I actually call this on any time the application is disabled. I remove out the snippet, but still I need to add in hooks for GDPR. Fuck me, right? <laughs> and then we have get snippet, get layout team code, get layout team code, and get active team ID. They're just helpers that I have. That is the bulk of stuff you need to know there. And the uh, next thing I'm going to do now is head into the code for the team and go through what's happening when I create it. So let's hop on over to my test store. So here we're on my test store. So if I click enable, what happens now is when I click enable, that's actually creating a snippet and including it. When I click disable, that's calling that remove snippet endpoint. So let's click enable again. So what's actually happening is if you go to an online store, once it loads, <laughs> then you're going to uh, edit code. This is really, really cool. So if I go to team.liquid, you can see in here now I've include cart flipper. That's including the snippet I create in the snippets directory. Paul, where the hell is the snippets directory? That's down here. Open your eyes. <laughs> so do cart flipper.liquid. This is what I've created. This is the, you can see here I'm targeting the side header car, basic CSS. Show no this guy's watching the video. I'm putting display inline block because notice in some teams, it was display inline. And obviously, when it's display inline, you can't do transforms and all that good stuff on it. And then I'm doing the code for doing the flip. This is really, really clever code, if I may say so myself, because I stole it. Uh, anytime it picks up a change in the cart or any of the, like the children of the cart, HTML element, it will cause the transition to happen, which is really, really sweet. Now, if I was to go back to my app, so car flipper, and I was to rotate both directions, that has now updated the code of the team. So we can go edit code. Edit code, and we come back here. You can see now this extra code here is a set timeout. Yes, I know I'm using set timeout. I'm a terrible person. <laughs> and it was putting set timeout to 600, which is the length of the first rotation. So when that ends, then this will rotate it back. Yes, that's actually I spent so long on this because I'm putting in 360 degree and then I was putting in minus 360. So it was double, it was like flipping twice backwards. Like I'm so thick. <laughs> That is what happens. Now, this is huge. I really hope you do know this. This took, uh, it took me fucking ages to figure out what was going on with these Shopify teams. How does it know what code to run? It's all done within this snippet thing. That's where, for most apps, where they do it. So when you install, if you want to test out um, your app on the store, or just even just go to any store and just install some apps, you will see this being filled up with code, and you will see team.liquid uh, adding references to it and all that good stuff. Now, the next thing we're going to move on to is running the application, which is not as easy as you would think. Okay, when running a Shopify application, it uses a thing called port forwarding. What that basically means is you need to give a URL that when hit, it will forward onto your local host. So here you can see the URL I've given is Terrible Badger, which is the name of the tool I use, creates it. What um, Shopify would recommend you to use is ngrok. Now, in theory, ngrok is quite nice because each time you deploy the application, if that URL has timed out, it will update it automatically for you. But this comes with a bit of a trade-off because what I found when I'm trying to develop using ngrok is it constantly times out and says, oh, you've sent way too many requests. 
I would like I've sent two requests in the last two minutes. So I really don't recommend using Ngrok. What I instead recommend using is so what I recommend using instead is a local tunnel. Now local tunnel each time you run it, it will give you a URL. So you need to insert that into your Shopify Partners dashboard, which is what I just showed you. Oh, what's the Shopify Partners dash dashboard? That's covering the documentation. Shopify's documentation. Learn that stuff there because they do a much better job explaining it to me. So each time you run your application, so I can actually show you here. So if I do view and uh, let's do terminal. And we're in my app here. So what I can do is I can do npm run dev, like so. That will spin up the application. And then you come in here. Add another one, you do LT. That's the, you install as a global dependency. That's the port you want to use. Now this gives <laughs> tasty dog 27. So tasty dog 27 is what you add into your Shopify's partners dashboard, along with the callback, which is the authentication callback, which is slash odd slash callback. That's how you run the application. I know you're going to see everywhere to use Ngrok. I really recommend not using Ngrok. It constantly times out. I've heard this of a couple of people now. It's really hard to develop with. So use local tunnel. Yes, each time you spin it up, you can have update, update that URL, which takes maybe a minute. Uh, you're going to save yourself a bunch of time using it. If you take anything away from this video, it's to use local tunnel over Ngrok, no matter what Shopify documentation says. Don't get me wrong, the Shopify, the Shopify documentation is fantastic, but for Ngrok, I just I just don't see the vision there. I don't think it's the best way to go. Uh, for I'm just gonna quickly, um, if well, I'm just gonna quickly cover, jeez, tongue twister. I'm gonna quickly cover uh, when you want to deploy your app. I recommend using Heroku. It's quite easy going. Uh, documentation is really good. Bang your app up on that, and then you can then you have a URL for your application. If you're interested in how you deploy an app and all that, I will make a separate video. It's kind of out of the scope of this one. You can drop a comment below and ask me to make one on it, and I will. Again, if you see any issues, or if you're building an app now, you have any problems, drop a comment below. I've covered everything here quite fast because I'm just trying to give uh, developers a quick overview on how to build the app so they can tear away and build an application. But if you think I covered something too fast or I did a shit job on explaining something, Tell me, I'll make a separate video only on that part of it. I hope you learned something today. Uh, overall, I think uh, Shopify app, building a Shopify app is a great experience. The documentation is really good. Shopify support, support is really good. Things I wish they will improve on is the GraphQL API for creating snippets. They can improve the documentation in some parts, not to use outdated libraries. And their Shopify Dev YouTube channel, if they could upload more videos, would be great because you do get a little bit lost. And if they could also show the app review process, they do have a video on it, but show the app review process and applications like this that's interacting with the store and what to expect and how to run them and stuff. So if, Shop if anyone from Shopify is watching this, that's what I recommend. But overall, great experience. Uh, recommend anyone to build an app if you have react knowledge then you're away with it if you have some known knowledge then you're just going to crush it like and subscribe if you want to see more content up to yourself i don't mind have a cracking day